All right, guys, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Arts Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Wednesday, August 15th. So a little bit of a pickup in volatility. So, you know, again, this was this kind of is what uh, markets are all about, you know, a little bit of a volatility increase. Uh, you know, do not be scared of these types of things. You know, the market needs to actually show a little bit of action once in a while. Um, so, you know, I think today is mostly about international fears. Um, you know, this is something that we've been all over the last couple of days. Um, I, I was making a joke earlier. I think the word of the day is, you know, if you use uh, Eddie Murphy and, and um, Mr. Robinson back in the day on Saturday Night Live, you could use the word contagion is today's word. You're going to, you, you know, you heard that all day today. Uh, definitely, you know, and then of course, you know, my other picture, we got to have a little a little my jokes are so bad, but, um, yeah, wild turkey. So, you know, today it's so funny because I, I will just, you know, go, go on about this a minute. When I, uh, you know, came into work this morning, you know, I get the alerts on my phone and so forth and CNBC, CNBC saying market down on, um, you know, more, chi more, excuse me, more turkey fears. I, I don't really think that's it. I think these guys are really missing. Uh, it, you know, it became a little bit more apparent to some of the broadcasters today that it's really China that I think everybody is more or less worried. That's what worries me. I could care less about Turkey. Turkey is not going to blow up the world. They're just not big enough. They's, they've also been having issues for years. Now, it is coming to a head, which I said in a video earlier in the week, but this is not, you know, uh, the major issue that's going on here and that brought a little bit of volatility into the market. It's China. And, you know, people are just, again, it's just such bad reporting that I'm hearing all over the place. This has been going on now for a week. It's not just today. Um, you know, you could take a look at what's happening here in the Chinese Internet ETF has been basically is broken down. And yet yeah, it's sped up today. It had more volume. So it kind of felt like a little bit of a capitulation. So I'm giving you a couple of the reasons why, right? And I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, things to watch going forward because uh, anybody could talk about, you know, or be accurate about hindsight and, and you know, back and forth. But, you know, again, I, so what I'm watching for tonight is two things. Um, Asia, right? So the Hang Sang, you know, p people just don't follow this stuff. And, and I don't really understand why. They A lot of people just watch S&P futures. And that doesn't really tell you what is going on globally. But it's been four days of pretty ugliness, right? So I tweeted this out this morning. Um, you know, so you could see that I'm not just, just making this up now. If we go to, to what I tweeted out earlier today, um, and this way you have the numbers. I mean, there's some big things. This this um, this regulation by China freezing the amount of games. You know, first of all, they if you read the whole article that Bloomberg Bloomberg put out a really nice article on this. Uh, they talked about how this has been going on for four months. China has not approved any new gaming uh, or games. Um, and then you know, if you look at the performance, um, where did I put this? I think it was this uh, first thing this morning. If if you look at the performance of the Hang Seng and the and and the Shanghai, you know the the two um, the two major indices, you know four point five percent down, four and a half percent in the last four days, and and again straight down days. The Shanghai uh, fared a little bit better, down one point uh, down three point one percent. But look at these year to date, right? So uh, again, going back to like what the press has been. Um, has been reporting about Turkey. Uh, are you, you know, it's a little bit common sense. Are you more worried about China or Turkey? I mean, uh, you know, China is a lot bigger economy. Um, and if they start to crumble, that's going to affect things globally. It's not going to be, and so, we, you know, I talked about this in last night's video as well as, as I, you know, I was saying that this is the biggest risk that I, that I see out there. Okay, so that said, it's kind of in the past, right? That's, what, that's what's already happened. Let's talk a little bit about the VIX. Uh, the VIX was up, I think, and I have these too. I think at one point was up like 25% today. So again, these bouts of volatility, they come, right? We saw this here as well. Volatility stayed present for about a week back in June, um, and then we went back and you know we got a little bit crazy to the downside. So you know we did this here as well. So I think we have another case of this. It could be a couple days. Uh, also, if you look at something I don't um, bring up all the time in the videos, but the the VVIX, which is like the um, the derivative of the VIX, right? So it's the volatility of the VIX itself, 
right? So when this is rising, you kind of want to watch out, right? This is what we saw back all the way in January. You know, the volatility in the VIX just got crazy. And it did today, but look how it closed off the highs today. So to me, this looks pretty toppy looking. So what I would be watching for tonight, and again, I, you know, anybody could talk about what's happened. And I think I paint a pretty good picture about why, what happened today and why there was volatility. What I would be watching for tonight I think all we need is China to actually close green. It doesn't have to be up 2%. If it is, that would be wonderful. But if China is up 20 basis points, you know, that's, that's what I was watching last night um, to see. And the Hang Seng just completely tanked. You know, started It started uh, down 20 basis points and finished down like 1.5%. So if we do that again, volatility might be there again tomorrow. Um, if that happens in, in China, because now they're, now people are starting to wake it, waken up a little bit to what's been going on now for this year, um, and especially over the last four or five days. So if it just finishes in the green, I think that would be positive. Um, I hope that it doesn't gap up. I hope that it actually like opens flat and then, um, and then closes in the green. Uh, the other thing is JD.com reports tomorrow. I think at this point, the risk is to the upside. So what does that mean when I say the risk is to the upside? It means at this point, this whole group has been pretty washed out. If JD happens to report something something decent, something guidance, I don't just says any it says anything positive. Uh, you could see a nice rally out of this out of this group, the Baba and the and the you know the um, the Baidu and BZUN and possibly Momo. So. Um, we'll see what we get. It's been a, you know, uh, JD.com is very inconsistent on earnings, uh, but that doesn't mean they can't, they can't do something positive here. So uh, I like that the expectations are very low. And like I said, I think the risk is to the upside. So I, I'm, I'm fairly optimistic about tomorrow. Um, I went home with all, and you know, I like to tell you what I, what I did rather than, you know, me coming in tomorrow and telling you whatever the thing, whatever the results are. Um, you know, so I went a little bit long. To, I, I, um, I played both the cues. So when we get these, these bouts of volatility, I tend to look a little bit less at single names and I look more at, at indices because um, it, they're just easier to play and they move fast when volatility, you know, when we're kind of chopping around, sometimes the S&P doesn't do anything and S&P futures, it's kind of useless trying to play S&P futures. But when we have some volatility, um, then it's uh, oh, some headlines about FTC out, which is good because I'm long that name. Uh, FTC Wells Fargo reports extension of joint ventures. So um, what I would, uh, so yeah, so I'm long some IWM. Um, I like to play IWM whenever there's there's volatility. It did not really get a big bounce as much as the Qs. So I, I was playing, I was both long IWM and I'm long next week's calls, not August, but August 24th. And I'm long, um, so I went long IWM and long the Qs. The Qs gave me a nice tradable bounce. So I was able to um, take a couple targets. I'm wearing just a, maybe about 15% of my, what I did today. Um, and I bought this twice today. Um, I added once in here. And I think I added somewhere in here. Then we went lower, but you know we got a bounce and enough for me to kind of take over, take off. My average uh, cost basis was 155, and I was able to take some off for, for 182. So um, that gave me a nice a nice little uh, trade for the day. Um, in terms of option activity and just a little bit about today's performance, but again, so I am long going into t tomorrow. You know, buying these dips and buying red days, they've worked in the past. So. I will continue to do what works well um, until it doesn't work anymore. And, um, you know, that seems to be the pattern. Buying on the green days has not worked. Buying on the red days um, has done very well. So I am wearing a couple of things. I added very small to a couple. Um, I added to a little bit of my Expedia position out in January. Um, you know, I've got plenty of time for a couple of positions that I've got on in January. I don't need to buy everything, but um, yeah, I'm looking for a little bit of a bounce tomorrow. And if not, my calls expire. Uh, my calls expire next week. Um, so I, if, even if we don't get a bounce tomorrow, I, I, th I think I'm still in uh, still in good shape. So what did we see? You know, it's funny because we we talked about this chart in the trading room yesterday. Uh, my colleague Pat actually brought up that there was a block of stock that went up yesterday in Boston Scientific. Talk about relative performance. And when we went over this in the um, 
in the trading room yesterday, I talked about how this was looked a little bit coiled, kind of a mini coil. Um, and, um, you know, remember this happened, this big pop happened on, on speculation rumors and then it was later uh, squashed and the stock kind of sold off and it's been resting here. It had good earnings, but look at the pop today. Um, and there was some call, there was definitely some call activity today, but we were on top of this one yesterday. So very nice. Um, you know, a couple of the consumer staples were pretty strong today. I think Pepsi actually looks like a pretty decent looking chart to me. Um, and Pepsi. So I like this. There were some rumors about KMB. KMB had a huge day about, I think, Tryon possibly taking a stake. Damn thing closed on its highs today. So, you know, if you bought Shatter on this one, um, it was slow to react to it. So uh, you could have made a little bit of money on that. Uh, other, you know, there's a ton of BABA action. It's really difficult because most of the BABA that we're seeing that is going up is, um, is versus open interest. But there is some support down here. We looked at this a couple times. You know, I think you don't have to necessarily buy the dip here. You know, again, my perspective is wait for China to be up tomorrow. If China is up tomorrow, uh, again, I you know, I, I can't stress it enough. If you're a retail investor, you have to, for, you know, broaden your horizons and look at what Asia markets do overnight before you go buying Chinese internets watch to see what China does the night before. That used to be a big trade for me in 2017 when, when the Hang Seng was really rallying. Um, when it was up like one and a half percent, I would play the Chinese internet the next day as uh, as day trade. So it, there's very much, and, you know, the nice thing about that is you kind of have a lead, you know, if that happens and if they're starting to rally a little bit. And, um, you know, and could, could be for a bounce trade. Um, a couple other, you know, and I think the healthcare space, you know, besides if you if you look at what green was what was green today, it was XLU, it was IYR. Um, there was some buying in the in uh, VPU, which is the utility ETF. You know, keep in mind what bonds did today. Bonds finished up uh, TLT finished up sixty basis points. You know, bonds and the VIX are two much must follows when we have a little bit of volatility. Um, gold is clearly not the thing to watch anymore. Uh, the yen even not so much anymore. But bonds really give an indication, you know, even the night before sometimes they uh, they rally when there's a little bit of volatility or, or something spooking the market a little bit. All right, so um, so that's it for, for the day. Uh, I feel like there's a couple other things I wanted to talk. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. This move in retail is was sick. Um, you know, big breakout, big, huge closes on the highs. You know, if this fool is fooling you, um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I don't want to say I wouldn't be surprised, but it's really difficult when something like this breaks out, closes on its highs, and then completely moves back in, um, you know, and and and, and uh, gives back the whole thing. So this Macy's earnings call, you know, the thing with Macy's, um, which is why I actually played this, I sold premium, I sold call, I sold call spreads. So I was playing um, that, you know, Macy's was going to fizzle on earnings report, but. I don't know what they would have had to do on the earnings report because it was pretty positive that I thought, at least I read. Um, I just think it ran up a little bit too much, but man, what a, what a squash down 16%. And all those retail companies that were going up yesterday completely got squashed. So, um, you know, and I talked about, um, you know, another example, I knew there was something else I wanted to talk about was STZ. You have to take profits. If you're trading options in this market and you're not taking profits, um, and I went over this. I said, I, I mentioned, no, I had no idea the stock was going to be down. It was down at one point, I think 10% today. Um, but just a testament to what I was talking about in last night's video. I said, I took three targets on this trade and I kept the last piece on and I got dinged on it. But at least uh, I, I locked in a winner. Like I can't lose money once you take three targets and leave the last 15% uh, one five of the trade on. But yeah, I mean, what a fake you know, a, a complete fake out. So there's nothing that's really going to tell you, you know, a breakout on volume. There's nothing that's going to predict that you're going to have a day like you had today. You have to take targets. You cannot be super greedy. So I'll leave it there for tonight's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.